everybody and welcome to another episode of the Creative Collection with Kathleen Richardson. Today we're going to be learning about shapes. I know a lot of people are pretty excited about this particular episode and before I get started I just want to send out a special thank you to two of my very best friends in the whole wide world, Dr. Larry Anderson and Carol Ann McGuire, two of my biggest supporters. Thank you for always being there for me and letting people know about some of the videos that I'm doing here on YouTube. With that, let's get started. Okay, take a look at the screen. I am going to show you some of the things I've done in Keynote. This is just a small fraction of the different things I've created. And I want people to know that I am not a graphic designer. I am not an artist. I just have an eye for the way I want things to look. So I don't care if you don't know how to draw. I don't care if you're not a graphic designer. You can learn all of the things I'm showing you in here. Ask Carol Ann. You will be able to use the pen tool. Everything I'm going to show you, you'll be able to do. And since there's so many things with shapes, I'm probably going to have to break this episode up into part one and part two. So if you notice here, I'm collapsing this little arrow right here so I can show you this particular collection. Again, lots of this, what you're seeing is shapes created here in Keynote. Take a look. I want you to just take a moment to identify shapes that you see. Take a look at the rounded rectangles. Look at the rounded squares. Okay, look at the opacity. Look at some of these um, lines up here and the opacity that was used. Okay, take a look again here. Rounded rectangle with some opacity, shapes, all of these different things, gradients. Okay, I'm going to jump down to this one. Take a look at my iPod. I made this in Keynote. Take a look at some of the gradients, some of the shapes, circles, okay, triangles, things that we use all the time. We have to figure out how to put them together. So if you say, oh, I want to create a butterfly, what shapes make up a butterfly? Okay, so that's another one. Let me show you this one. Okay, this collection here, take a look at the swimmer. Okay, now again, we see some circles. We see, okay, some lines. We also see some wavy lines here, if you notice. This was done with the pen tool, and I'll explain this a little bit later. That's another shape. Okay, take a look at this next one. I'm going to use this one as somewhat of a teachable moment. One thing I do a lot of in Keynote is I use the group tool. So if you notice up here, I showed you in the last episode how to come up here and format your um, toolbar up here. Group is something I use a lot. If you notice, this is nothing but a bunch of circles and a bunch of ovals, if you will. Okay. So number one, if I want this to go back to where it goes, I always use my oops combination key set and that's command Z. Okay, Command-Z undoes anything you've done. Okay, Command-Z. So let me come back. I Command-Z too much. Okay, so if you notice this is grouped, I'm going to click here, ungroup, and take a look at how many shapes are going to show up. See, all my circles, all of my ovals, okay? Well, a quick way to highlight these things is to pull your mouse across all of them at one time. Now, if you get something in there you don't want, if you hold down the Shift key and click on it, it will go away and it won't be a part of the group. When you click group and take a look, now I've got my group and I can move it wherever I want to go. Okay, the other thing I like to use is a function a lot of people don't use is the lock function, which is command L. So let's say I'm using um, a lot of different pieces, a lot of different elements and shapes, and I just want to manipulate some. You know how you try to click on something and everything else moves? Well, let's say I want these blue um, people to stay right where they are. I can command L or come up here, arrange lock and choose that. And look, see the X's? Now when I click on them, they're not going anywhere. So if I want to manipulate my yellow row, I don't have to worry about accidentally grabbing my blue people and then moving. So I like to lock a lot of things. You can also come up here and click arrange and you can unlock once you've locked, okay? So let me click on my blue people so I can show you. So here are my blue people, arrange and unlock and now I can use them, okay? So let's take a look at some more shapes. Um, this little marquee right here, what shapes do you notice? Oh, Kathleen, I see a rounded rectangle, I see circles, I see stars. How did I make this moon? Okay, I made a yellow circle and then I made a black circle and just scooched the black circle over a little bit to give it a crescent moon effect, okay? All right, let's take a look at my uh, art studio or my gallery, or if you will. What is this? Rounded square. Nothing but a line, and this down here is actually a circle, okay? Take a look. Look at that. Nothing but a circle, okay? And I just moved it down here so nobody would know. Don't tell anybody, okay? Okay, so let's take a look at a few other things. 
this is where I'm gonna start okay notice we like this right kind of looks like the Simon says or what was that game Simon or whatever anyway I'm gonna show you how to recreate this so I'm gonna come up here click new like I said before I normally highlight these little default text boxes get rid of them so let's jump up here to our shapes section I'm gonna zoom in somebody told me I need to do zoom in I can't remember your username I think it was compose or something so um, here's my zoom in okay shapes we have lots of shapes we've got the line shape we've got arrows we've got squares rounded squares we've got circles triangles you name it call out buttons and also down here we've got the pen tool that I keep talking about and that's the custom tool to be able to draw what you'd like so what I'm gonna start off first is with this rounded square okay so let me zoom back out and I'm gonna open up what I like to call the brain of keynote which is the inspector I'm gonna come here to the graphic icon this is the graphic inspector inside of the inspector there's several that go across the top here so if you notice if I hover it'll tell you what it is so the one with the square and the circle is graphic inspector by default a lot of times keynote will make the image with a image fill in it I don't want this image fill so if I wanted to I could come up here and choose none I could choose color fill and then remember this from last week with our color palettes I can click right here on my color box grab my magnifying glass and choose another color okay if I like that color remember I can drag and drop it down here so I can save it for another time I can also do a gradient fill which is two colors so I'm gonna come up here grab that pink again and I'm going to now take it down so I have like a shade or a hue darker of the original pink right okay now if I wanted to I could kind of move the angle around see it moving on my screen okay I can also come here and do an advanced gradient skill I don't really use this function too much but I could choose the shade okay I want it to be a little bit darker here a little bit darker here so you can come in here and do a little customization with your gradients I could do an image fill um, I could come here click choose and navigate to something on my computer I'm gonna choose this blueprint JPEG and now that is my image you can't really see it because right now the function is tile I could choose original size and I still can't see it original size if I hold down the shift key and pull this out it will constrain the proportions if not we'll get the 300 pound baby see if you don't hold down the shift key this is what happens but if you hold the shift key it will constrain the proportions for you so there's that um, original size of the blueprint I could stretch I could scale to fill and I could scale to fit so sometimes you have to play around till you get the one you like I can also come down here and do a tinted image fill come here and choose any color that I want to give it a little tint and whenever you see these two colors like this diagonally on top of each other that means your opacity is not at 100% okay well for this demonstration I'm just gonna come do a color fill okay and I am going to move this square up here and I'm gonna make it kind of a rounded rectangle right okay I'm gonna do command C command V that's command C command V that's to copy and paste if you notice we see our diagonal so you know right away I've got some opacity on I don't want that so I'm actually gonna delete this one and scoot this one over and start this one because I don't want any of my opacity turned down okay so I'm gonna copy and paste again and so now I have this one here I can just do paste again and once you start doing paste 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 it will start to put them at equal um, increments across the screen so just put a little FYI in your hat for that one okay I like to play around too if you notice this isn't quite the way we want it to look take a look I'm a little bit closer on some of these so you can play around I just wanted to kind of show you quickly how to copy and paste but let's say I wanted them closer so first of all I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger but this looks like it's taking up a little bit more than half the screen so I'm gonna scoot this one over okay and if you notice take a look on the screen you see it tells me my X and Y axis for those of you who are really good with math I'm not going to profess to be that great but you can kind of look and kind of figure out I do look a lot of times and say oh, okay 494 okay well then the next one needs to be at da 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 da, -da. okay so you can kind of look at that okay so I'm gonna command and paste and I'm gonna take a look and let's see now you see that yellow line that means that these are lined up perfectly so it's not on point here but if I scoot up they're aligned horizontally so I'm gonna scoot this one over right there but I still now I need a little bit more so I'm gonna pull this one in 
and I'm gonna pull this one in and do you see that down there take a look it's 477 on the left 477 on the right oh awesome so I don't want to copy and paste two more times and then try to line this up so watch what I'm gonna do I'm gonna click one time on this one hold down the shift key and click on this one command copy command paste and then just pull it down like this okay you like that don't you I know I think that's so cool so what I know is these are perfectly centered because now you can see my yellow line running through the middle of the page now I could come up here and highlight these and move them up a little bit if I wanted to and I could continue to play with these grid lines till it's the way I want it to be okay I don't want these colors to all be green so I'm gonna click this second one I'm gonna click the color fill and I'm gonna choose orange then I'll come down here and I'll choose blue and I'll come down here and I'll choose this color here okay so let's take a look at a couple other things now if you notice if I want to move this one it'll start to move so what I can do is remember the grouping I can do command a if you notice all of them are selected and I can come up here and click group and now it's one group okay now I'm gonna come over here take a look all right we've got this black and we've got this white rounded circle or oval whatever you want to call it so I know right away I gotta come up here and I gotta choose my circle right and I need to change my image fill over here to a color fill and we're gonna choose what black so I'm gonna pull this down there's my black oh you're starting to get it and now I'm gonna pull it up and out and then I'm going to center it on the page and center it horizontally and vertically. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go up and grab another shape from up here. I'm going to simply do command C, command V. So here's my black. I'm going to come here and now I'm going to make this one white. But what I'm going to do is I need it to be a little bit smaller, right? Hold down your shift key to constrain the proportions and just pull it down a little bit and now center it inside. And then you can come up here and add a text box and type in the text box. That is it. I'm going to do command A because it's white and I'm going to come up here and quickly choose black. This formatting bar is a quick way to get to a lot of things that are inside of your inspector. So I'm just going to come here and click black and that's it. So we made that shape really, really fast. Okay. If you notice, I've got lots of other shapes down here I'll quickly go over. This is my rendition of a bookshelf. Think about it. How did I make this? Ponder it. How did I make this? Take a look. How did I make these books? Okay, take a look at some other shapes. Take a look at some other shapes. Okay, take a look at my panda. How did I make this panda? What are these shapes, right? And now I want you to take a look at my TV. How did I make this TV? okay it's an entertainment center how did I make my speakers how did I make my entertainment center okay so lots of little things uh, on a more personal note I make all of my own invitations so this was my baby shower invitation now this one took me about two days to make um, so that's me and I made all of these shapes with the pen tool or just by using shapes uh, let me show you a couple of other ones I've made in the past uh, my daughter's first birthday invitation, Princess Taryn. And I made her second birthday invitation. I made my cupcakes and my teapot. We had a tea party. My uh, son turned 10, and so we had a party like a rock star party. Again, all these shapes, my flames, the totally dude hand sign thing, the VIP pass, everything, all this made inside a keynote. And then a friend of mine had a bridal shower. And so I actually made these people and the couch and everything. So we're going to stop right now with the basic shape part one. And we're going to do another video on shapes part two using the pen tool. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please, what I would like for everyone to do is, and I'm going to add um, an email address if you don't already see it on YouTube, send me what you create. I want to show off what people are doing. Carol Ann McGuire has done a great picture, so hopefully she'll let me share it on the next episode of her brother. And I want to show off what she did with the pen tool, but I want to show off what everybody is learning. So if you make something really neat, show me and um, we'll be able to share the creative collection together. Okay, thank you. Thank you.